The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Come on. Ah, darn it. Soldering surface mount components by hand is actually pretty difficult. I think what I need to do is build myself another solder reflow oven. This time I'll make it a little bit smaller so it's easy to keep around the shop and try to enclose all the components inside of it. Let's get started. Here's the oven we're going to use. It's a $15 cheapie from Big Lots. And you actually want an oven with a manual control because basically you can just remove the potentiometer or the timer from it and hook your elements directly up to wall power. And you also want to look for a unit that has an element at the top and the bottom. Not all of them do. Uh, that way you surround your board and you heat it. Heating it from the bottom is just as important as heating it from the top. I mean, there's a lot of people who reflow circuit boards using frying pans. So yes, you want to hit it from both sides. Okay, so here are our parts. We have a solid state relay. This will control the alternating current heating elements. This is a five volt regulator. So this is hooked up to the AC and it provides power to our microcontroller board. And this is my uh, custom AVR development board that I made. We have two thermocouple modules hooked up to it with their own little circuits. Then we have thermocouples. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put two thermocouples in this, one on the left and one on the right. And that way we can average out the temperatures so we can detect if there's like a cold spot or side. Then we have this nice LCD screen. I've got tons of these laying around, so I try to use them up whenever we can. And these two wires here will hook up to our controls. Very simple. Select profile, run profile. And we have these on disconnect, so it's easy to put together. I put this oven on end on my scanner at home and scanned it. Scanners are basically one to one, so you can get an actual size image from it. Uh, it's got some distortion in one of the axes, but it's not bad. So I, was, I used that to make this template, and I cut it out of cheap paper first, and once I knew it worked, then I cut it out of plywood, and even put some vent holes. Uh, plastic probably would look cooler, but plywood will uh, basically conduct much less heat, and it won't warp as much. So let's put this oven together. When you're hooking up a Hitachi LCD, you wanna make sure you always have the um, dim control attached, which is usually done with a potentiometer. If you don't have this attached, you won't see anything on your screen. Even though it's working, the screen will be blank. So basically you have to add the dim control potentiometer whenever you hook up one of these screens. I wanna make sure I know which way is up on this LCD. Usually, the way the text is going, you know, see how the top of the text is there? That's also the top of any device. You've probably seen me use disconnects and headers many times in the show, and they take longer to hook up with wires, but look, I can easily disconnect this and this in order to work on things. So the time you spend hooking up headers, you can save that time later on when it comes to assembly. Now I'm drilling most of these holes by hand uh, for two reasons. One, because it's faster than drawing them in the computer, and two, the laser either cuts all the way through material or not at all. So drilling halfway, you can do that on a router, but not a laser, so I'm just doing it by hand. I'm just kind of guessing, and you know, I've drilled enough holes in my life, I'm pretty good at it. Holes, your favorite Shia LaBeouf, Sigourney Weaver, John Voight movie. So we're going to be using thermocouples, not thermistors for this project. What a thermocouple does is it basically has two dissimilar metals attached or welded together at a point, and that's where it gets a temperature reading from. It takes a little bit more effort to get the reading though. Um, we bought these modules that basically have an integrated circuit that will do the conversion for us. So we've got two of these modules, one for each thermocouple, and we're going to be running the thermocouples through the oven, down through the top, and back over this way and down to our units. And uh, there's usually two different color wires, usually yellow and red, and you have to hook them up correctly, otherwise it won't work. And this has already been spliced together, so I can't really make this shorter. I've just got to run it the full length and then loop it up and attach it at the end. I'm gonna mark the wire colors. Right now it's working, I just wanna make sure I keep it working, so I mark everything. There's a metal uh, heat sink on this. I'm just making sure it's not actually connected to anything. I don't want someone to come up and touch the screw with their finger and get a shock. Unless that was my plan, you know, to shock them. It appears like this heatsink isn't actually connected to 
any of this stuff. It's good to check though. I'm gonna make these wires as short as possible. So I'm gonna rewire the alternating current going into the five volt adapter. All the components have been mounted to our end panel. So we can see how this is gonna to go together. Yeah, that'll work pretty good. So I'm putting these thermocouple into the top. And I'm doing that so they basically can come down very close to the surface of where the parts will be. So we can get two readings, average them out and make sure that the part is being evenly heated. And I'm doing it on this side underneath this panel. So this thing will be nice and enclosed when it's all done. If we make it so someone accidentally puts a bagel in this thing, then we've done our job right. Okay, these thermocouple chips are labeled red and yellow for the wires, so I wanna make sure I insert them the right way. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Since today's project deals with reading temperatures, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the difference between thermocouples and thermistors. A thermistor is an easier, simpler solution. You basically set up a voltage divider here where there's an analog sensor at this point, positive voltage here, and a thermistor going to ground. You could also reverse this, of course. The thermistor changes resistance based off the temperature, and then you can read that change as an analog voltage setting. So here's a thermocouple. You have two different types of metal joined together at a junction, and that's actually where you do the temperature setting at. The two different types of metal actually create a small voltage based off the temperature, and that is what this sensor IC detects, and it translates that very small voltage, it's usually like 0.0005 volts, into actual temperature data that your microcontroller or application can read. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, you dev kit HQ. Everything is nice and neatly wired up. Our thermocouple wires were kind of long, but that's okay, that's better than ruining the ends of them. So the trick now is to put this in place. The original metal piece was kind of press fit in. I want something that can be opened up, of course. So my plan is to use these little wooden blocks and JB weld them in place where the screws are going to be. That way, when this is put into place, there's something that screws can bolt onto. So I'll put these in manually and JB weld them. Then I'll drill marker holes using these as a jig, and then I can put screws through. All right, Allison is going to help me with the JB weld. She is going to mix it and I'm going to apply it. So here's our selection menu. We just have two profiles right now. We have um, lead, no lead, and then two black profiles. Now what profiles are with um, soldering in an oven like this is it'll ramp up to a certain level, stay there. It'll ramp up to another level, stay there, and then ramp back down. So there's kind of different stages it goes at. Uh, the profiles we put in are fairly primitive, but they seem to work, so I guess we can do a quick test. I notice there's a problem with the thermal couples. When I touch the one on the left, there's no change at all. When I touch the one on the right, there's an immediate change. It goes up to body temperature. So it doesn't seem like both of the thermal couples are working. Otherwise, touching either of them would cause the average to go up. So I've got to figure out why. So the parameters here are, there's two different thermal couple readers. There's two different thermocouples and then they're hooked up using the um, spy bus, which means they both have the same data and clock lines, but they have chip select. So what the system does is it's like, okay, you're the active device, give me your data. Now you're the active device, give me your data. Now I'm gonna average the data. So we have to figure out where the weak link is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect uh, the thermocouples 
and switch them around. And what this will tell us is, is it the thermocouple that's bad or is it something else? So, you know, this is kind of the essence of troubleshooting. You, um, go, you kind of go backwards to your solution. You start at the, the simplest thing and you check it and then you check the next thing. All right. I switched around the thermocouples. Okay, now that one's working and that one isn't. Okay, so that tells me that it's not the thermocouples themselves, it's one of the modules. So the quick thing to test, so right now the right hand one is working. So unplug this real quick. And these are the spy buses that hook up the modules. I'm gonna swap those around and see if it still works. So now the one on the left should react to my body temperature. Yep. All right, so with these modules here, there's two of them and they're on the same bus. This bus is working, this bus is not. So it's not the modules, it's something with the spy bus. And how the spy bus works is, there's usually three lines, data in, data out, and clock. There's a fourth line which is chip select. So if you have two different devices, you can tie together the data clock lines, but they have different chip selects and the system activates chip select and that's, that's how you know which device you're talking to. So if you want to talk to this EEPROM, you activate its chip select and that's what the spy bus is talking to. If you want to talk to a sensor, you deactivate that EEPROM and now you're talking to the sensor. So what this system is doing is they're on the same bus and it selects one thermocouple, reads it, then it selects the other one and reads it. But for some reason that part's not working, it's only getting one sample instead of both. So I checked both the electrical connections. It wasn't the thermocouples, so that made me think that it was something else. It was either the code or the soldering. I checked the soldering, it all looked good. So I reflashed the code just to make sure there was a most recent version. I'm gonna touch both thermocouples. Okay, so the problem was we hadn't flashed the code. So, you know, check your hardware, but don't, uh, <laughs> always check an easy, dumb solution first. Like, oh, did I flash the code? Because that's a lot easier to test. You just push, you know, a button on the computer than, you know, having to resolder everything. So always go look for the simplest solution first after you've tested the other possibilities. And again, that's why it's good to use headers and easy to disconnect items because then you can easily swap things out. Like, oh, this one doesn't work? Let's see if that one does. If you've soldered everything manually, it might take up less space, but it's harder to test. I'm drawing a black line to indicate where the center of the oven is when you have it closed so you know where to put your boards. So thermocouples are aligned. It's got a couple of these simple boards here. These are the same boards that drive this unit. It's just like a little AVR board. Yeah, didn't do a super great job with the surface mount paste, but we'll save that for a future episode. All right, let's plug it in and see if it works. Cookies are done. Hey, that worked great. I was able to make my little development board using the new solder reflow oven. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be taking a viewer request to make a TV proximity sensor that keeps your kids from sitting too close to the TV while they're watching it. Those silly kids, we'll see you then. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.